can do it right now and we're going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do Good morning,
just uh, enjoy what it is exactly that God is doing in our lives. So let's uh, let's continue as we uh, continue to worship Him and give Him glory. Psalm 115. 
Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. So let's continue to praise him. Let's stand up and let's say a prayer and we're going to continue praising his holy name. Father God, thank you so, so, so much for being on our team. Yeah. Thank you for sitting on our bench. Thank you for guiding us and counseling through all of our trials, tribulations, glories, and praise. Father God, be with us as we worship your holy name today. Father God, be with Brian as he gives your message. But most importantly, thank you for sending your one and only son, Jesus. It's in his name we all said, Amen. 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 And yes, you, you can you can sit down. Um, and so, <laughs> Joanna likes to leave you hanging there. Um, <laughs> okay, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Uh, and so, uh, it is so good to have you here this morning. Uh, and during this portion of our service, this is when we receive our offering. And so, uh, one of the things that, that Joy was talking about is, uh, you know, the Olympics and, and all that's been going on there. And we're going to touch on that uh, just briefly in, in, this, in the message this morning. But, uh, you know, when, when we look at what God gives us, uh, how is it then that we use what God has given us? And that, that is important because one day you and I will all be accountable for everything. Every, every breath we took, every conversation we had, every relationship that we built uh, is all going to be something that uh, we stand before the Lord and, and quite honestly get to explain as to why we did what we did. Um, how, how, how it is that we managed to get through um, a day, a week, a month, a year without pointing anybody to the Lord. And so what God gives us in our lives, uh, whether it be athletic ability, um, a, a really good set of hands to, to build and to and to create uh, a heart for others, whatever it is, how is it then that we are sharing that and giving back to God what he has blessed us with? And so that, that filters into our time, our treasure, and our talents, and so all of those things. And so as we come together as a church family, um, we, as we, we've come to realize that we are much stronger, we are much, much more uh, forceful, much more a force for his glory and for giving God uh, praise um, when we are a group. Uh, we can certainly let it rip when we're on our own. That's that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, at the same time, what we want to do is we want to realize that as as a church family, uh, we come together, strengthen each other, we spur each other on to doing good works, and we want to give back to God. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for all of the blessings you pour into our lives. Thank you for the way that you love us. Thank you for the way that you have continued to bless us. And, and Lord, help us to be a part of your plan. We've got a purpose for our lives, and it fits into your plan. Yeah. And so, so may we be connected with you on all levels. Time, treasure, talent. Lord, it's, it's an amazing ride when we are on this adventure with you. Help us to be closer to you and to be more connected through all that you're doing in us. And we are so grateful for each and everything that you have blessed us with. May you pour it into us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It is so good to see you. I am really excited about what's coming in today's service. But before we get to that, I would like to get you up to speed on what's going on here at Christ Church Global West. Let's jump right into tomorrow. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock, gear up from 5 to 7. We've got gear to give, gear to get. Come and be here then. 5.30, we've got a board meeting going on here at the building. For all of those who are part of the Board of Trustees, that's at 5.30. We're going to try to make it as short as we possibly can, but we want to make sure that we take care of all of the things we need to get, get through on our agenda. Then I want to remind you, women, 7 o'clock, women's Bible study going on here at the building. It's going to be a great time. You don't want to miss it. Moving on to Tuesday, we've still got... The great stuff going on for the kids. We've got elementary school CC kids going on, and that is 5.30 to 7 o'clock. And at the very same time, impact 5.30 to 7 o'clock here at the building. We feed them. We have a great time outdoors. We have a good opportunity to get into God's Word with a lesson after that. So 5.30 to 7. If you've got kids that haven't had a chance to come, bring them. If you'd like to check it out. You can stay and be here with them, but also I want to let you know 
but you can invite folks who don't come to our church. We would love to have kids come and be a part of that. We'd like to reach the community and to invite kids in to be a part of what we're doing here. Then Wednesday, adult Bible study, 7 to 8 p.m. Don't forget that. Thursday, we've got, well, I think they're going to have, I think they're going to have a worship rehearsal. Might want to check with June Hammond about that. Then, moving on to Saturday, once again, gear up for one to three o'clock. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just getting my voice back. Hey, the other thing is, next Sunday is going to be a great time. I would encourage you to do this. If you haven't been inviting folks to come with you, please start doing that. We would like to get in the habit of inviting our neighbors, our friends, to come and be a part of what's happening here at Christ Church. And I think this is a great time of year to start doing that. Now, just, just to give you a few quick reminders, we've got uh, the reverse rummage sale coming up in October. We've got trunk or treat coming up at the end of October. We also now, I'm excited about this, we also have a date to drive through Santa which will be December the 14th, and our Santa has confirmed that he will be here. So we are excited about that. So all of those things going on and more, and we would love to have you be a part of it. Now, especially those of you who have been baptized within the last year or two, if you haven't had a chance to plug in yet, make an appointment with me and let's sit down and figure out what God is calling you to and how you might be able to plug in and be a part of what's going on around here. All right, enough of all of that. Let's get back to worshiping our Savior, our God. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Wow. Some great stuff this morning. So we're excited about that. Uh, there will be a sign up shortly for you to sign up for Trunk or Treat um, to be able to uh, get that going. We'll have that. It'll be on our app, so be looking for that. And then the rubber sale, as Brian said, continue to us. And then just one other quick thing, too, is that uh, we will be. Uh, Maybe starting choir practice for Christmas. So that'll be in October. So anybody who wants to do that, please come see me. Okay? All right. And then, yeah, our practice is Tuesday this week. So, yeah. So if you want to join us on Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we'll be there. All right. Come on. Let's stand up and let's praise God, shall we? All right. So uh, as we get ready to, to do this particular song, you know, um, God has really just been amazing. And uh, no matter what's happening in the world, we just know that He is here with us. And as we get ready to be able to be with Him in His loving arms someday, know that we can be in His loving arms today. Right? We can continue to be here as in heaven, singing His praises. Giving him glory in everything we do. Spirit of the Lord. 
put it somewhere else while we talk at some point because I'm afraid you guys will just. <laughs> probably won't. Okay. So um, I need to grab a grab a mic. That's a good thing. And this morning, um, we usually I usually ask a lot of questions, and these guys give a lot of answers, which is good. And so. The very first question I want to ask is, how do you get really, really good at something, Stacy? Practicing. Practicing. Does that, does that sound good to you? Yeah. Yeah, when you do something over and over and over again, you get better at it, right? Yeah. And so, can you think of something that you did over and over and over again that made you better? Yeah. What, what, what did you get better at after you practiced it over and over and over again? <laughs> Did, didn't you play soccer? Yes. Well, yeah. only in the summer. Right. But only in the summer when you played soccer. You went to practice and you kicked the ball over and over and over again, right? Yeah. Did you get better? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stacy? Is there something that you practiced over and over and over again that you get better at? Yes, there is. I'll tell you. One of the things that I, I think we miss quite often is the obvious because we're looking for, I don't know, that special answer. Um, you've gotten a lot better at walking since you were born. <laughs> Did you know that? And you practice it every single day. I've seen you. You actually walk right from over by your mom to right here. And you're getting good at it. Right. So don't think you're not. All right, so we get better and better at things that we do repetitively that we do over and over and over again. I mean, have you have you seen any of the Olympics? Have you guys seen any of the Olympics? Have you watched any of that? No? Did you get a chance to watch any of that? I know. I saw somebody on YouTube go to the Olympics. Okay, that's that's close enough. Yeah. I mean, for, for kids your age, that's kind of what we expect, right? Is, yeah. You can you saw it on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But when you're in the Olympics, when you're an athlete, when you do a sport, like when you do soccer, and, and I know that Stacey has done some cheerleading and some other stuff, um, that the more we practice, the better we get at stuff, right? And that's how it works with, well, with athletes. The, the ones who do really, really well, they practice really, really hard. They, they tell us, and I wouldn't know because I'm not a professional athlete, but from what I understand is if you put the majority of the effort into practice, then the games and the competition are second nature. They just kind of happen on themselves. So the hard work comes in the practicing, all right? So God tells us that the way that we should live a better life then is, and the way that we should live the best life is to do something, well, not so over and over and over again that it just doesn't have any more meaning, but that we don't want to give up on the things that we need to be able to do. And so Peter, who hung out with Jesus, said that because of what God and Jesus have already done for us, we need to be good, be smart, have self-control, not give up, be like Jesus, care about other Christians, and love everyone. And that comes from what we've been teaching recently. And so he also tells us, he says, therefore, I will always, and this is coming from um, 2 Peter, uh, therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth that you have been taught. And so the question then becomes, what are the things that we need to do over and over and over again to get better at so that we are closer to a relationship with God through Jesus? What is the one thing that you and I do, and we do it on Tuesday nights, Ms. Joetta uh, leads you guys at the very end, asks if you have any requests at the end of your class on Tuesday night, what is she asking you for? Does she want to do what? At the very end, before you leave. If there, are, there you go. If there are people that you want to pray for, and the more we have conversations with God, the better our relationship is with Him. And that's the same thing. It comes to the place where if we only do it once in a while, we don't feel very comfortable, we're not really sure what we should say, we're not really sure if it really works, but the more we do it, the more we understand it's important and the better we get at it, right? You have a better opportunity to explain yourself and to ask, ask questions and things like that to your parents, to your teachers. The more you have conversation, and the same thing is with God. When we want a conversation with Him, and we want to know what's going on, and we need His help, we want to have that opening where we can talk to Him. So 
be more faithful in our prayer, be more faithful in hanging out with God's people, be more faithful in listening to what God's got for us, and then we will, well, we will run through that finish line uh, as, as, well, as winners, okay? So let's take just a moment then, and let's pray. Let's pray for these guys and for our church in general. Lord, we are so grateful for the fact that you continue to bless us with young people. We pray today that you would protect them, that you would watch over them, that you would pour your spirit out upon them, and also that you would do a great work through them. Lord, continue to bring your blessings over and over and over again and help us to get closer to you as a church family, as a church body. Get closer to you first and then closer to each other as we bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, you can come over here. And here's what we're going to do. You may have one thing to eat and one thing to wear. And the thing, and, and I know that you probably, some of you already, you're going to end up with more and more of these wristbands. That's okay because what I want you to do is I want you to give more. So go ahead and, and take 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 the candy that you want and grab a wristband and then uh, it, make sure you have one to wear and then at some point start collecting them to give to your friends. Here you Here. <laughs> okay, so um, we're uh, we getting to this this time of year, and, and so um, we're going to get back to this in a little bit. But for right now, I have a video that I would like to start things off with. So let's just take a minute and watch. So when, when you announce a video and you get these eyes that pop up on the computer screen, you know. <laughs> That's right. I know it's there because you guys tested it. The one that came from TikTok. <laughs> particular trend on social media was started by people who had their own personal videos, but I think it kind of morphed from that, where people went through and started looking for other people's disasters, failures, whatever. I, and so I've decided that from now on, when I finish a sermon, I'm going to dismount. Okay. And, and, and trust me, 
Um, I have had plenty of crashes myself. Um, growing up, my mom used to call me Oops. Because she would hear that and then there would be a crash. And she knew something was going on. Uh, but so today marks the close of the, the 2024 Summer Games, uh, the Summer Olympics. Each four years, um, I tend to tune in and watch some amazing athletes do some amazing things. And while I didn't personally participate in this game, these games, most likely uh, I'll never be an Olympian, even though uh, there might still be hope for me as uh, I'm very much a fan of the German guy who won the gold, the silver medal in shooting, who basically just showed up like Dirty Harry, put his hand in a pocket and just started shooting stuff. I thought that was kind of cool. But when we look at this, we realize that there is so much to what it takes to be an Olympian. And I really appreciate that girl in the middle of the floor who, when I heard, I, I saw somebody refer to it as she was buffering. I thought that was good. <laughs> right? She was getting there, she was gonna get it, right? And, and so, and then she did, she hung in there, she stuck with it and, and she made it happen. And so uh, I can identify with her effort as much as uh, these Olymp the, the Olympians inspire me, I would say that that little girl probably inspires me more uh, because she really didn't have uh, you know, a gold medal waiting for her. She didn't have endorsements. She didn't have uh, a, a correspondent with a microphone wanting to interview her when she stepped off of the floor. She was there because of her love for that. And, 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 and quite honestly, I think a lot of the Olympians still are, um, but there is just so much more to it now than there, than there used to be. Now, before we jump into today's message, um, we need to be reminded that it's been, we've had kind of a, um, I, I don't know if I would say confusing, but uh, a little bit of a disjointed summer uh, with uh, uh, things that have happened, uh, things that uh, have called uh, me and Joetta away. So uh, we have been kind of interrupted in, in our uh, sermon series. And so we're going to jump back into that. And, and before we do, uh, the last time we were in Second Peter uh, was four weeks ago. And so I want to help you pick up where we left off. And to do that, we're going to, be, we're going to back up just a little bit and review. And so if you've got a Bible or a Bible app, please turn to or scroll to Second Peter, uh, right at the beginning, chapter 1. Uh, and uh, we're going to, I'm just going to breeze through this because I want you to have this to, to kind of have in, in the back of your mind as we get into the second part of this. So what I did before was we, we talked about 2 Peter 1, the first half of that chapter, and then we're going to go breeze through that, and then we're going to talk about the second half of the chapter today. And so, by his divine power, this we're starting in verse, in verse 3, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself, by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. That's, that's, that's a fantastic passage. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us a great impression, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. I, I, I really think that's one worth remembering. Uh, in view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self control and self control with patient endurance, patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who doesn't want to be productive and useful? But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's where we left off. This morning, we're going to continue on in the second half of that chapter. So we're moving forward. 2 Peter 1, starting in verse 12, Peter writing to fellow believers like you and me, he says this. Therefore, now, therefore, this is he's about to tell us something that is connected to what we just read. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things. We're going to kind of land on this today. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them. 
and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. So I got to thinking, these things, well, if we think back to what we were told in that previous passage, God gave us everything we needed for a godly life. He calls us to follow Jesus, and he fully equips us to do just that. He also gives us divine promises that allow us to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption. Wow. Wow. Isn't that something we all really would like to be able to do, just escape all the junk that's going on around us? Yeah. He calls us to grow in the Christian life by way of the fruit of the Spirit so that we may be productive and useful. And in verse 5, he says, In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Now, that was... That was chapter 1, verse 5. Now, so when we get to then to verse 8, Peter then says, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is some important stuff right there. I'm not sure where you are in your walk, but I can tell you I personally need all the help I can get in being productive and useful for the Lord. I can't do it on my own. That's not how this works. Now, Peter knows two things about Christian, his Christian readers. First, they know the truths that have been, he has been teaching them or that they have been learning. In fact, they are rock solid in these truths. Peter uses a Greek word, and I'm going to try not to mangle it. Esterimenos. Here, and he uses this word, and it means fixed or established or strengthened. And these Christians that Peter writes to don't need to know something differently than they already do in order to live in the life of Christ. They know they are where they need to be. And at the same time, then, Peter also knows that even Christians, even Christians who are aware of the truth need to be reminded. You and I, we need to be reminded of this stuff. We go out there and we get into this world and it is so saturated with all of these distractions and all of these things. They're not all bad. Not everything that distracts us is necessarily bad by itself. We have some great things going on in our lives that just tend to just kind of swerve us off the path where we should be focusing on Christ first. And so at the same time then, what happens is Peter knows that we need to be reminded. Now, do you need ever need to be reminded of anything? Do you? I mean, if you're anything like me, you need to be reminded of things daily, which I believe is why God gave me wife. <laughs> you can just ask her. I need to be reminded not to leave my stuff on the counter. I need to be reminded to empty the dishwasher, to pick up something at the store, to take out the trash. And last, most certainly not least, I need to be reminded of that last thing that Joetta told me to do, whatever that was. <laughs> and when that happens... Joetta says it's because I'm not paying attention, to which I say, huh? <laughs> but seriously, we often need to hear these, these truths over and over and over again to highlight the connection between what we know and what we will do with what we know, right? Sometimes, sometimes we need to be reminded of stuff that we already know, but it's kind of been put on a back shelf. It's kind of just not been foremost in our thinking. But Peter made it part of his life's work to feed the sheep. Remember when Jesus told him, you know, do you love me? Because if you do, feed my sheep. Well, that's what Peter's doing here. He is, he is responding to Christ's command to feed the sheep. And so he's doing that by reminding them of what they know in Christ and urging them to act on it with God's power. It is what Jesus called him to do. So then Peter, in verse 13, says, And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. Now, this isn't just a, a one-and-done kind of a reminder. He's saying it only makes sense that I should keep reminding you. It's important for us to be reminded of the basic truths, especially when we are immersed in this surrounding world that is filled with false teachings. It amazes me how many people who are even, well, identifying themselves as part of God's or Christ's church to step out and say things that aren't even close to God's word. And it's like, okay, well, let me help you. Let me, let me just give you back some of the basics. And so he goes on, and, he's, and, and, and by that, I mean, what happens is that when we get reminded of those things, it helps us be grounded. It gives us back that foundation that we need to stand on. And that's very important. So, so Peter continues. 
He says in verse 14, For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. Peter knew that he didn't have a whole lot of time left, so his plan was to make good use of what he did have to drive home the basic, the point that the basic truths that he wanted believers to remember were something that they needed to focus on. There's always a need. There should always be time, and we should never discount going back to the basics. Okay. Peter isn't the only one to discover the great benefits of revisiting the fundamentals. And with us moving into the fall season and having green and gold show up more than not. Um, I noticed, by the way, uh, Mark, you're wearing a purple shirt. Yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> and so... So, pastor and author Chuck Swindell, Swindoll shares that the late football coach and strategist Vince Lombardi was a fanatic about fundamentals. Okay, sometimes the back screen just gets me and I'm like, okay, did I really just say that? The late football coach Vince Lombardi was a fanatic about fundamentals and those who played under his leadership often spoke of his intensity. They often spoke of his drive, his endless enthusiasm for the guts of the game. Time and time again, he would come back to the basic techniques of blocking and tackling and all that football required. And on one occasion, his team, my team, the Green Bay Packers, lost to an inferior team. We're not going to mention who that was. It was bad enough to lose, but to lose to that team to Coach Lombardi was absolutely inexcusable. Coach Lombardi then called practice the very next morning, and the men sat silently looking more like whipped puppies than a team of champions. They had no idea what to expect from the man that they feared the most. Gritting his teeth and staring holes through them, one athlete after, one athlete after another, Lombardi began. Okay, we go back to the basics this morning. Holding a football high enough for all to see, he continued to yell, Gentlemen, this is a football. <laughs> How basic can you get? He's got guys sitting there who have been playing the game for 15, maybe some of them for 20 years, who know offensive and defensive plays better than they probably know their kids' names, and he introduces them to a football. That's like saying, maestro, this is a baton, or librarian, this is a book, or marine, this is a rifle, chef, this is a stove. I mean, talk about the obvious. Why in the world would a seasoned coach talk to professional athletes like that? Well, apparently it worked because coaches don't lead their teams to three consecutive world championships all the time. But how did it work? Well, Lombardi operated on a simple philosophy. He believed that excellence could be best achieved by perfecting the basics of the sport. Mm -hmm. Razzle-dazzle, crowd-pleasing, risk-taking plays would fill the stadium for a while and even win some games occasionally. But in the final analysis, the, con the consistent winners would be those teams that played smart, heads-up, hard-nosed football. His strategy? It was know your position. Learn how to do it right, then do it with all your might. That simple plan put Green Bay, Wisconsin on the map. Before Lombardi's tenure, it was a frozen whistle stop somewhere between Oshkosh and Iceland. What works well in the game of football, though, believe it or not, can work well in the church as well. In the ranks of Christendom, it is easy to get a little bit confused. Change that, a lot confused. When you say church today, it's like placing your order at Baskin Robbins. You've got 31 flavors to choose from. You can select the Wheeler Dealers, the Snake Handlers, the Prima Donnas, the Positive Thinkers, and the Self Realizers. Rock bands with colored lights and hooded priests with bloody knives. Shaved heads and pretty flowers and flashing showmen with headlining lies that are also available. And if that doesn't satisfy, you can, sure, you can search for your favorite ism. And it's certainly to show up. 
humanism, liberalism, extreme Calvinism, political activism, anti-communism, supernatural spiritualism, or fighting fundamentalism. Okay? But wait. What are the absolute basics, then, of the church? We just looked at what Peter pointed us to, and mostly what Peter says in 2 Peter verse 1, 3, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And then verse 5, in view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. We got that. So then, what is the foundational task of a biblically oriented local assembly? The church. What should that look like? Filtering out everything that isn't essential, what is left? Well, let's go to the coach. God tells us that we have four major priorities if we're going to call ourselves a church. For the church, for believers, we point to our four fundamentals in the faith. And we find this in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, getting in God's word, and the fellowship, that's hanging out together, and to the breaking of bread, Church people love to eat, and it's a good thing to do, right? And to prayer. Teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. To these four, we are continually to devote ourselves. Solid, balanced, winning churches keep that task of perfecting those basics in front of them. They keep it on the top shelf. They know this is what's most important. These form the what aspect of the church. The how can be equally as important. Again, the coach addresses the team and he declares that the church needs to get the job done and needs to be engaged and called to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. Hey, that's easy, you say. How simple can you get? Yes, are you ready for a shocker? The toughest job you can imagine is maintaining these basic assignments. Most people have no idea how easy it is to leave the essentials and get involved in other activities. I mean, believe me, there's a steady stream of requests of people who would just assume, you know, and good, wholesome people and, and ideas with, with resources that want to come up and use the church's platform to advance their cause. Not all bad causes. It's just, you know, it isn't the way it's supposed to work. I mean, good and wholesome things not directly, though, related to the purpose of the church, which is the interpretation, the exposition, the application of Holy Scripture with relevance, with enthusiasm, with clarity and conviction. You see, first and foremost, that's what the pulpit ministry is about. But churches like that are so rare across this country, it makes you want to stand up and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Bible. <laughs> I mean, because when we think about it, we need to get back to the basics. Outstanding coaches constantly review the basics of their sport with their teams, and good athletes can execute the fundamentals, and they can do it consistently well. I've heard athlete after athlete, and you may have heard this too, when interviewed about an upcoming game, they say this, we'll win this if we can just execute well. Right? You've heard that. We just need to execute. And then after a game, they might say, well, we, we just didn't execute. And in the same way, believers in Jesus must not neglect, but must continue to execute the core principles of the faith, even as they go on to a deeper understanding. Even as we get deeper into God's word and understanding who God is, we still need to be able to execute the basics. Just as an athlete needs to have constant practice, Christians need constant reminders of the fundamentals of our faith and how we believe the good news and to be able to share that in the first place. That's the top of the list. That's the most important thing. Yeah. We can be bored or impatient when we hear messages on the Christian life because we've heard them a hundred times before, but don't let that happen. Instead, take the attitude of an athlete who continues to practice and to refine the basics so that they can execute those basics. They then become and remain second nature. Those basics, those things that they do repetitively become second nature so that you have, well, in the church, what we're talking about is what I like to call spiritual muscle memory, where it becomes second nature for us to do certain things. And Peter goes on to explain how it is important that the gospel of Jesus 
and is, is why it is so important. And he says, for we were not making up clever stories. This is verse 16, by the way. We were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. All right? Eyewitness. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. I love this. I mean, Peter is saying, hey, you can't make stuff like this up. I couldn't have come up with this. They actually witnessed it. He's Peter saying, we were there. We witnessed the transfiguration. We saw it with our own eyes. The transfiguration was such a powerful experience that Peter sees it as the primary proof that Jesus came to be. Amen. Peter continues. I mean, I mean, think about it. Peter's the guy that's constantly sticking his foot in his mouth, and even he even did it there at the, at, at the, at the scene of the transfiguration. He's like, Lord, we should make some really cool little statue thingies here for this. And, and nobody even paid attention to him. I mean, it was like, dude, chill, sit over there. And, and so Peter continues, when he received honor and glory from God, when Peter witnessed this, the voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, I mean, can you imagine hearing God's voice? This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Verse 18, we ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So think about this. The specific event Peter uses here as proof is one of the most unique and profound moments in the entire Bible. We commonly call it the transfiguration because Peter, James, and John were allowed to see Jesus transfigured from his appearance as a normal man into, well, his true and eternal appearance as the Son of God. You can read that account if you would like, Matthew chapter 17, Mark verse, uh, chapter 9, and Luke chapter 9. You're going to find those accounts, and they are powerful. I would encourage you to spend time doing that. Peter saw Jesus' face, though, shining as though it was the sun. His clothes became white as light. But the, the part that Peter emphasizes here is hearing the voice of God. The majestic glory, speaking and declaring that Jesus is his beloved son and that he, the Father, is very pleased with Jesus. You see, Peter's argument is that God the Father himself gave honor and glory to Jesus. Nobody else. It came straight from God. And Peter knew that Jesus was the Son of God because he heard God say so. It's that simple. God said so. It must be true. I got to go with that. So not only did we see it, but we heard it, Peter says, with our own ears too. Don't you understand? God spoke from heaven, we heard it, and we are telling you. Then he says, because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. And that kind of goes back to what we talked about around here a lot. When you want to read the gospel, a gospel account of Jesus Christ, I encourage you to read the end first. Read what Christ went through. Read, read about his death, his burial, his resurrection. Then go back and start at the beginning again. Because then what happens is you have that confidence in the authority of what you're reading. So Peter continues, you must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, these prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. Wow. It was the moment witnessed by Peter, James, and John when Christ was revealed in this bright and shining glory and the voice of God from heaven declared Jesus as his son and the reality of that event confirms Old Testament prophecies. Peter has had the privilege of, eyewitness, of an eyewitness testimony both of that single event and he saw the majority of all the other cool things Jesus did. This vindicates everything with which has been written about the Messiah and the prophets of old. We find that this is the answer. This is the proof. And many of those prophecies were fulfilled with the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Other prophets, prophecies will still be fulfilled. We still live in a world of darkness. But those prophecies about Jesus, including the ones about his return as judge and king, are a lamp to our the return of Christ is not something to be feared, but to be celebrated. You see, that encourages us, and that leads us and educates us. But these lamps, those prophecies, they will no longer be needed when that day comes and when Christ returns. Prophecies will all be done. 
You see, Peter described Jesus as the morning star, a name also used for him in Revelation 22, and Jesus will be bring lasting life to the world and also to our hearts. So these basics are given to us or and from the revelation of God, which is what this is. Even though there's one book called Revelation, the entire thing is God's revelation about himself to you and me. We know what we know about God because it's what God wants us to know about him. We should be encouraged. We should be inspired. We should be motivated to put what we learned into practice. And as Peter has shown us, it's a good thing to be reminded of the fundamentals of our faith. To be reminded that Jesus, well, that he is life. That God is in, he is God in the flesh, and his teachings, his, his humiliation, his murder on the cross, they all serve a purpose. That purpose was to use the cross to build a bridge between us, us as sinners, and a holy God. And through Jesus' resurrection, we are also given a hope, a confident expectation. We're also given that confident expectation because of the promises of the things that are yet to come. For God so loved you and me. He gave his only son. That if you and I believe in him, we will not perish, but we will have eternal life. Basic? Maybe. Worth hearing over and over and over again? Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us a foundation to stand on, for reminding us of the basics, for helping us to see that continuing to reflect on those foundations is what helps us to grow in our relationship with you through Jesus. May you continue to pour into us. May you continue to help us to go deeper into who you are. But may we do so not neglecting the basics. May we always be reminded of who you are and who we are because of you. Lord, we love you. We look forward to what you're going to do next because you have shown us a love like no other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and so at this time, we would encourage you to, if you haven't already and would like to take part in communion, which we do every week to get a cup, uh, Rick will be uh, stepping inside the door momentarily with the bucket. If you didn't grab one on your way in, raise your hand, and Rick will bring you one. I think you've got uh, a couple of takers here. Uh, and so... In college sports, mostly at the Division I level, there's something that's relatively new, and it's called the transfer portal. Some of you might be familiar with the transfer portal. It allows athletes, mostly those with scholarships, to step out of a situation that they're unhappy with in the hopes that they will be invited to a team where they are happier, happier with their circumstances, with their role on the team. I'm not a fan of the transfer portal because I... I, I, I happen to believe that we as adults need to help people, under, young people understand that, well, what it looks like, quite honestly, to keep your word. When you commit to something, follow it through. But that aside, when I think about my life, at one point, I stepped into the spiritual transfer portal. I realized that my place on the team, my role in life, was going to be better when I stepped out of the life of sin that I was living in and onto a team where I am the giver and the coach, God, because of the work of the greatest of all time, Jesus. God only, that's the only time Jesus is a goat, by the way. Okay? Other times he's the lamb, right? The only time he is the goat is because he's the greatest of all time. God only sees his accomplishments, the accomplishments of Christ, when he looks at us when we've committed our lives to him. And so now, that's the team that I want to be on. So I turned my old life, and I gave that life away, and I still have, well, I still have to, to, to be more like Jesus. I still need to be more obedient. I still need to repent. I still need to confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior and believe in my heart. That, those were the things that I needed to do. And I, I, went by, I went by those things, and I confessed to Christ. I confessed that he was my Savior. And then I decided to take it public. I decided to be baptized by immersion. And things started to change. Not because of the baptism, because of the commitment. Because of opening my heart and inviting Jesus in. Is it all smooth sailing since then? No. I'm close. But here's the deal. I'm on the right team now. 
and the greatest team member of all time walks with me through every struggle, every difficulty, every challenge that I have. And if you haven't stepped into the transfer portal yet, responded to what Jesus has done for you, I want to encourage you to do exactly that. Step out of your old life, step out of sin, and transfer your life from, from one of struggle and despair to one of joy and hope. Yeah. That is what it looks like to step out of what you used to be into who God wants to make you. That's right. Lord, as we take of the bread today, may we be reminded of the fact that we have a Savior who's willing, willingness to do what, it, what needed to be done to pay a price that we couldn't pay, to step up, to surrender himself for us. Lord, we love you. We are so grateful that you love us in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. And then so when, 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 we, when we take of the cup and we think about what it means to be in community with Christ, what it means to be on the same team, what we're looking at is, is I, I, I at one point was on a hockey team when I was a little kid that I was a terrible hockey goal, by the way. Um, and I would get the puck in my own end. My goalie would give me the puck. I was a defenseman. And I would pass it to one kid. That's all I would do. In my own end, I didn't have to skate with it. I didn't have to do anything. I pass it to that kid, and we get a goal. It was that easy. He was that good. He went up and did all the work. All I had to do was remember he was the guy. I got the puck to him. I got a point. It was an assist. I could have handed him the puck in the locker room and got an assist. It was, he was that good. And so when we understand that our relationship with Jesus is one where he does all the work. Yes. We just realize that he is that all-star. He is above and beyond all we could ever hope for or imagine. And when we make that commitment and realize that our life is completely in his hands, he scores goal after goal after goal and we get all the assists. So let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for the fact that you love us in this way. That you're willing to step into difficult situations with us. You're willing to go through painful things. You're willing to just stand there with us in the fire and the flames. Or no matter where we find ourselves. Things aren't always going to be great. But you will always be great. And Lord, thank you for loving us. And letting us remember and reflect on the fact that you thought we were so worth it. That you gave up everything for us. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen, amen. And so, as we close, we're going to do one, one thing, and I just need you to stay where you are, and let's bow our heads. School's about to start. We need to pray for our kids, yeah. our schools, for our teachers. Lord, we are so grateful for the fact that you give us the, the system of education that you have. Lord, we know that there are a lot of problems with it. We know that there are things that are going on that we, we aren't particularly thrilled with, but we ask today that your hand would be upon all of it. We ask your protection over our children. We ask that you would give yeah. wisdom and, and strength and compassion to the teachers, to the administrators, Lord, even to the school staff, those who might be custodians, school nurses, crossing guards, bus drivers. Lord, may they all be drawn ever closer to you and live out your will in their lives. And Lord, during this school year, we pray that you bring about an opportunity for your gospel to be shared, your glory to shine. Lord, please pour into our kids, pour into our parents, pour into the schools, your spirit and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And then the last thing I need to remind you is, guys, uh, I totally spaced it. it I, I, I'm, I'm going to blame Dayquil. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when, uh, when I put together the announcements, there is a men's breakfast uh, coming up on Saturday the 17th, which is a week from yesterday, uh, here at the building, uh, 8 a.m., come and eat man food. Uh, and uh, and hang on, I need to get out And 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 come. Not that salads aren't good, okay. But I just want to remind you that we're having a men's breakfast. All guys, uh, you're welcome to come. Bring your kids, bring your grandkids, bring your neighbor's kids if you can coax them in your car. And we would love to have you guys come and be a part of that. Once again, 8 a.m. on Saturday. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Love you. Thank you for having uh, having uh, the opportunity to be with us. Have a great week. Share Jesus. And, uh, <laughs>